either way, mm -hmm. in June of 2026, I expect there to be at least yeah. six or 7,000 Tesla robo taxis operating in yeah. Austin and to have many other cities that have multiple thousands of vehicles multiple thousands. operating as well, well. Yeah. Well, this is it. We're getting to the wire. We've got Waymo, Uber, and Waymo announcing yeah. right now in March. And then, of course, still on track, Tesla is supposed to launch their program somewhere in June, a couple months ago. Do you yeah. think right off the bat here, do you think that this was kind of planned by Waymo to, to go straight ahead, or this was something that they were planning for a year or two already? Uber and Waymo begin driverless ride hailing service in Austin. So I would speculate that is kind of both. Um, I think that Waymo has been looking to enter the Austin market for a while. You know, it's one of the the markets that makes a lot of sense after Chandler and San Francisco. And so I think, you know, Waymo's probably been planning to do this for a while and then the partnership between Uber and Waymo has been evolving over time. And so I'm sure that, you know, it made sense for them to say, okay, for this next rollout, let's figure out how we can do this together. Um, but then on the flip side, I think Tesla's announcement of planning to launch a road taxi service in June in Austin may have really put the pressure on as far as timelines are concerned and forced them to try and not only get this done, but get this announcement out ahead of time so yeah. that they can um, try and front run this move by Tesla. But I'm really excited about this, actually, because I think you know this is great for ride hail customers in Austin. And I like to see Tesla actually having some competition. I think this is going to you know put a lot of pressure on them to deliver the goods and deliver them well. So yeah. I, I think this is great news. I, you know, my guess would be that Uber wanted you know, was hoping that Tesla would partner, right? Um, Dara did come out and say that he's been talking to Elon Musk several times, probably begging Elon, and Elon just kept saying no. Uh, but, you know, it would have been perfect for Uber to say, okay, we've already, we're going to be in the Austin. You guys are there. Waymo's there. Let, let's, let me help you, show you how we could work together. And then now they've got these two partners and you know, showcase what their offering is. But right, you'll, let's walk it through. But does Uber have anything to offer? This is uh, Waymo's uh, commercial. I think I'm just going to turn off the, the music here. Yeah. Waymo One, now available to all, only on Uber. So in, in Waymo, in Austin, it's only through Uber, as opposed to going through U Waymo's app. Yeah. So it's interesting. Now, here's uh, this Uber will offer Waymo rides on its platform and they'll manage the fleet. Riders will be prompted to accept or deny driverless rides. So this is the interesting thing where you click the button and you ask for you're using the Uber app and you're saying, hey, I want to ride from one place to another place. They may give you a Waymo. They may not. And if they do, then you go, oh, do you accept it? But you could ask for it, but it's you, it's basically up to Uber to decide. Right. So riders who are requesting Uber X, Uber Green, Comfort, or Uber Comfort Electric could be matched with Waymo's electric Jaguar at no additional cost, and it's priced the same, by the way. Customers will have the option to accept or switch to a non driverless before a nearby Waymo's dispatched. Um, they could increase their chances of being sent an autonomous vehicle if they indicated their preference in the Uber app. That's how they're doing it. It's a multi-year partnership between Uber and Waymo, and uh, basically... You know, hoping, right? Uber and Waymo were, Uber was hoping that they would be this middleman. They would have multiple different uh, choices of which Waymo is one. Right now they're launching one. We'll talk about this uh, paragraph here where they chose this company, but let's, uh, let's share a little bit more information. Here's Waymo, new way to ride in Austin, increase your chances, get mad at getting matched. Uh, the co, co uh, CEO of Waymo said, we're launching one, Waymo One on the Uber app, and then you got Dara, the CEO of Uber, saying the same thing. Um, yeah, what's your thinking about how they're, they've set this up uh, where, you know, you don't actually choose the the, the company, the, the car? Yeah, it really does raise the question of whether or not Waymo will also have the ability to just use the Waymo app to, like, say you're coming to Austin because you want to try a driverless car. 
can you just use the Waymo app to make sure that you get the car? Because if you only have the option of using the Uber app, like how many times are you going to have to request a ride to randomly, you know, get assigned the the robo taxi version? Uh, that would be kind of interesting. Now, for most people, that's not going to be part of the decision making process for them ordering an Uber. So I think that at the high level, this this makes a lot of sense for Uber. This is if you're Uber, this is how you want this to be structured, that the size of the fleet of Waymo's that's going to be available to supply rides is going to be small. And you just kind of want to integrate it seamlessly into your marketplace. And if a driverless Waymo happens to be close to the customer when they request a ride, then sure, you want to match them with that vehicle. Um, but you don't want them to have to wait longer to get one that's further away from them. Um, and so the ability to switch back and forth between regular Ubers with drivers versus these uh, driverless Waymos, it helps to improve the overall quality of service on the metrics that Uber cares about, which are going to be, you know, how long does it take the car to get to you? And uh, you know, what is the cleanliness of the car and can it get you there quickly and all those things. So it, it makes a lot of sense from that perspective. If I'm Waymo, I, I am curious what Waymo is getting out of this deal other than not having to maintain the fleet. Um, maybe they're getting funding for deploying this fleet. I, it's, you know, we don't really have a whole lot of the details of what the partnership is offering Waymo in return. And those are the the questions that I'm really curious because those are the questions that help to answer, you know, what type of value proposition would Uber be providing to Tesla? And I know we're going to get more into that here in just a moment uh, on one important dimension of the service. But uh, yeah, I, I don't understand the uh, the value proposition for Waymo other than the fact that it, you know, Uber can definitely keep these cars busy. And so if they're having a hard time with, you know, uptime and usage on these vehicles in some of their other markets, then maybe that makes sense. Or, you know, the other thing is that those markets have been developed for a long time. Like obviously San Francisco is very tech forward. It it's going to be very easy for this as one of the most technologically advanced solutions on the road in San Francisco for them to get riders. Um, and maybe they don't expect that that's necessarily going to be the case in Austin. Maybe they think it's going to be harder to actually attract customers. And so from a marketing perspective, maybe this makes sense for them. Um, yeah. There's some different calculus in in the decision for for both parties. Um, and to reiterate on the, on the capital side, if Uber is providing capital to help fund the build out of the fleet, you know, that's a huge win for Waymo. Um, so that would be, you know, another big thing. Yeah. They, they have not announced it, announced it, but first of all, it's very tiny numbers, right? So Waymo has 700 cars right now. They, we haven't announced how many more Jaguars they're going to build. They still need to build them. They still need to get them out there. And, and that's exactly already. why, yeah, Uber can't allow you to pick, do I want a robo taxi or not? It's just because yeah. there's not enough of and that's why Waymo can't do it on their app too, because now you're going to split it between Waymo app and Uber app, and you just just want to keep it focused. But um, there's 700 cars in four cities now, and they're adding in Austin. So you know, a couple hundred car cars, if they're lucky. Otherwise, they're going to have to shut down or reduce the cars available in Phoenix and you know LA and uh, San Francisco. We're talking a couple hundred cars, you know, if they're lucky. That's what we're talking about. So it's just, it's and, more and like, this a, is, you know, one of the really big challenges for Waymo in general is their ability to scale up to the large fleets that are necessary, you know, to yeah. operating an Uber network equivalent that is completely robo taxi ride hail requires all those cars. And it's easy for Uber to deploy thousands if not tens of thousands of cars in a specific city because all those cars are there like you're just attracting riders new drivers it's a yeah. whole different or yeah drivers um it's a whole different story when you are talking about a robo taxi because you have to have a specially manufactured car that's capable of doing that <laughs> yeah. and this is where tesla is just going to have a huge advantage that you know 
once cyber cab production gets up to speed or even before then like if they decide hey we're just going to start building out robo taxi fleets with model threes and model y's in all of these cities like you know if it takes i think the the number that james dalma has estimated for the city of chicago is that mm -hmm. you could fully cover the city of chicago with ten thousand cars that's like two days of production versus <laughs> yeah like years worth of production of uh of waymos yeah. at this point in time now obviously they want to scale up and make that faster but they have to do that and they haven't done it yet and so it's a huge challenge what's, for them. what's your guess if when tesla launches in austin how many cars you think it's going to be 200 just like waymo is or you know somewhere under 700 or do you think it's going to be thousands when i listen to elon he says we already have thousands of cars driving wire riderless in uh in our factories in California and soon in Austin, just the cars that they're producing every day is already doing this. Um, and they already have, right? Uh, in California, they said employees are already pretty, pretty well testing and ride healing using driverless cars now. Um, he said thousands. So I just can't see that they're gonna do 200 or some small number. He did say dip toe, dip toe, dip toe though. So what's your Yeah, estimate? so th that's, that's the exact statement that it's, trying it's hard to decode you know tesla and elon they don't like to do things small so on everything inside of me thinks that mm -hmm. they're going to roll this thing out at scale pretty quickly but it may be you know maybe the first month is a couple of hundred cars it, it'll really depend on i don't think that the cars are going to be the bottleneck I think the bottlenecks exactly. is going to be yep. how many, um, yeah. how many super like remote yeah. supervised operators they're going to have and how often they're having to intervene and how, how much do they want to debug? I mean, what we've seen with FSD beta is that they do a lot to constrain the number of users on their system while they're still trying to hammer out all the bugs. And I think that we are going to be in a phase early mm -hmm. on of trying to hammer out all the bugs. And so while it's possible that they have been able to pre-do all this work, I mean, we know they've been working really hard on this system, super incognito there in California already. Um, and we know they're doing stuff at both factories as far as on premise. And th there's potential that there's even more than that going on in Austin because they're so good at keeping secrets right now. I don't know how to gauge what the progress of that internal testing really looks like to know how fast this, this rollout is going to be. And it could be that they've really worked out all the bugs and we launch with, you know, a thousand cars and then we quickly scale to multiple thousands of cars or it could also be that we're mm -hmm. going to just deploy 500 cars and it's going to take us two, three, four months to really iron out all the bugs. And, but then once we get all the bugs ironed out, exactly, yep. then we just go to, you know, straight to those 5,000 either way mm -hmm. in June of 2026, I expect there to be at least yeah. six or 7,000 Tesla robo taxis operating in yeah. austin and to have many other cities that have multiple thousands of vehicles thousands. operating as well, well yeah i like what you said earlier which is uh, the right thing which is they're not hardware constrained right they can yeah. put in thousands of cars uh their own owned ones yep. or even uh, you know yeah, it's, already said it's by all next the year. supporting infrastructure that goes into operating test. that fleet that yeah. is the and it both from how many you know safety supervisors do they have but also mm -hmm. the cleaning infrastructure the charging infrastructure so all of yeah. that stuff is going to be where your bottlenecks are and but they're yeah. going to be pushing hard on all those bottlenecks like that's elon's whole thing is okay what's the bottleneck today like let's solve it this week and then move to the next one let's watch a, a commercial just for fun a uber's commercial dad what do you think the name of this driver is uh <laughs> I don't see a driver. <laughs> yeah. Do you Uber to class? 
because I noticed you get a lot of parking tickets. So you must be driving <laughs> somewhere. Tickets are brutal around campus, so I think uh, Uber is the way to go. Can, I've just spent a couple bucks, but he, <laughs> it drives a lot better than Arch did last <laughs> night coming from the airport. That was the worst. I missed like three turns. How does Waymo know we're at a red light? Yeah, I don't know. I thought you told it. Dad, did you have a computer in college? I did not. Hear. Did you have a cell phone? Of course not. How old were you when you had a when you got a cell phone? Probably sixty-five. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, you can go to class with if you want. You want to go to class with? Me? Oh look, we've arrived. Now have a great day, son. Have a good day, class. Yeah, thanks for the ride, fellas. Hopefully, no one sees us. Right, Give us a big hug. Bye, boss. Great oh day. yes, Frida. Waymo, thanks for the ride. Appreciate it. Hope to see you soon. All right, you got me in my seat, baby. You gotta get me out. Here you go, big guy. Appreciate it, Waymo. Okay, yeah, good commercial, fun. Uh, more about the uh, the family, no. the Manning family, than anything to do than with Waymo. Car. But yeah, yeah, that's still still it, good. It did look like a very very small back seat. So that yeah. is, and the fact that you like. Well, that's I mean, interesting, shot, isn't obviously it? they want to keep everybody in the back seat, but it, yeah. it would have been much more comfortable if it was two in the back and one in the passenger yeah. seat. Three big, three big so. uh, guys. Yeah, I know. So they're marketing this, obviously, and I, and I think that's what this is, right? Get out there, show yep. that we're we're autonomous now, and we got Waymo. Mm -hmm. You got a couple hundred cars out there, and we'll hide it from the app. So we'll see how they actually manage this. Um, let's well, talk about this bit. I'll just yeah. say real quickly that, you know, while I am skeptical about Waymo's ability to scale this solution rapidly and across the whole country, um, it is just really exciting that they have like yeah. been able to build this system that really like in the areas where they've done the full HD mapping and, you know, they've put yeah. in the work it actually works and it's you know it's a super cool experience i i haven't actually been able to ride in a waymo yet but i'm looking for like i will definitely do it and i'm looking forward to it and i know that it's a magical experience for lots of people and they are doing uh, that the fact that they're doing that work a it's a an incredibly impressive technological feat I have to give them huge kudos and props um autonomous vehicle technology is obviously going to save yeah. a lot of human lives over time and so you have to you know applaud all yeah. of the people who are doing all of the hard work that's necessary to make this technology possible and um and then yeah it's a magical experience that people who have actually ridden in one are really excited about you know it is one of those things that makes the future feel exciting for people who've experienced it